This video will demonstrate graphing the reciprocal function of a quadratic function. And in particular, this one will have two zeros. We're going to use the same rules as graphing that we normally do when graphing the reciprocal function. So graph the following function and its reciprocal on the same axes. f at x equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. And we'll just write that reciprocal function is the same function under the fraction of 1, or 1 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. Let's first factor f at x. So we're trying to find what multiplies to negative 3 and adds to positive 2. The numbers are 3 and negative 1. So that means the original equation factors into x plus 3, x minus 1. And we've been doing this a long enough time, we should be able to see that means the zeros are at negative 3 and 1. Just looking at the factors, we can tell what the zeros are. The axis of symmetry, which is an x value, is going to be halfway between those zeros. So we add the zeros up and divide by 2, which gives us negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. It makes sense. Negative 1 is halfway between negative 3 and 1. So where is the y value of the vertex, or the optimal value? of the vertex? Well, that's just sub in negative 1. We want to find out what's the vertex y when the vertex x is negative 1. And we get y is negative 2 times negative 2, or y equals negative 4. In other words, we know the zeros, and now we also know the vertex. But when we go to graph the reciprocal function, we're going to need to use that information up here to come up with some of the features of the reciprocal. For example, uh, we'll start with the equation. The equation is going to be 1 over the factors, x plus 3 and x minus 1, which means where there used to be zeros, there are now asymptotes. So there's an asymptote at negative 3 and another vertical asymptote at x equals 1. We know for reciprocal functions, there's always a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. We also know when we go to graph, we're going to get the equation passing through the original function at 1 and negative 1 for y. And finally, we take the reciprocal of the vertex. That is, the x stays the same, negative 1, but the y is 1 over negative 4. And that's going to be our reciprocal vertex. Let's use that all that information and graph. And we'll start by graphing our original. Our original well, we need to make a scale here. And now I'd wish I'd done that before. But we'll go quick, put ticks, label them. you notice I've already put my arrows and labeled the x and y axes. Making the scale done. Let's put our zeros. Negative 3 has a 0. And 1 has a 0. And the vertex is at negative 1, negative 4. So negative 1 negative 4. There's our vertex. And let's make a nice parabola U-shape. Go up through the zeros. Oh, didn't like that so much. Eh, I think I'll erase that. Try to get a nicer looking parabola. It's hard, but you do your best to make a nice U-shape curve. That didn't look much better. Try one more time. If I don't get it, we're going on. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, there's our original parabola. Now we're going to graph the reciprocal. Wherever there was a zero, that becomes a vertical asymptote. I'll put a dashed line, and that's x equals negative 3. And another dashed line here, and x equals 1. You know what? I should label my original parabola, too, just so I don't mix it up later. My original parabola is f at x. I'll label that right there. Back to my reciprocal. Drew the asymptotes, the vertical ones, and I should tell the reader by putting dashed lines so that they're visible that there's also an asymptote right along the x-axis that's y equals 0. So I put dashed lines there and I write y equals 0. That's my horizontal asymptote. And I also know another thing. My reciprocal function is going to pass through the original function wherever the original function was at a height of 1. So at a height of 1 right there, 
my reciprocal function is going to pass through, and same at this height of 1. My reciprocal function also shares a height of negative 1. So wherever the original parabola was at negative 1 y, it'll also have a reciprocal function. So I put little x's at a height of 1, not an x, but a y value of 1, and a y value of negative 1. And the last thing is my reciprocal function needs to pass through the reciprocal vertex. The original vertex was negative 1, negative 4. The reciprocal vertex is negative 1, negative a quarter. Now we draw our reciprocal function. It's in this quadrant here, in the same parts. And I'll draw an arrow here. And it goes right along the axis, except to come up to this little x I made that they share, and then closes right in, but never touches that asymptote. I'll do this other top right piece here. It closes right in on that asymptote, never touching, just right along it, until it comes through this x, and then curves around, and follows right along that asymptote. In the middle piece here, it's got to close in on this asymptote, either asymptote on both sides. So it's right along the asymptote, comes right up, stays right beside it, right alongside it, and then goes through this x, where it shares the height of negative 1, comes up through the reciprocal vertex, and then comes down to the other shared point, and right along that asymptote all the way out. And these three pieces, 1, 2, and 3, are all parts of my reciprocal function 1 over f at x.